Let's take this example of the characteristics of organizations. And uh, here we will look into formalization, specialization, centralization, and configuration, the percentage non-workflow personnel. And uh, let's take uh, three uh, example companies. The first company is a software company. Do you know a company that's software? Yemensoft is a company. Okay. So let's take Yemensoft as an example here. Walmart, uh, this is like a big supermarket. Uh, if you guys remember if we talk about, let's say, Al Huda supermarket. And then here we have uh, State Arts Agency. Uh, this is some sort of a museum. Do you know Al Matahaf Al Harbi maybe? Okay. So these are three different organizations. And let's compare between those three companies. Uh, number one, uh, if you look at the uh, technology wise, these people the software, these people do retailing, and these people provide government service. If you look at the size, uh, how many people work in Yemen Soft? Maybe 25, 50, okay? Uh, how many people work in uh, Said Al Huda supermarket? You know, maybe a thousand people work there, including all of the shifts that they operate in, including the guards and the people who prepare the shelves, people inside the kitchen, people who prepare the fruits. So there's a lot of people, so maybe 500,000. You know, in Walmart, they have like 250,000 because they have a lot of branches. And uh, this third company here, we're talking about the museum. Maybe they have 53 people, you know, the museum, the experts, the tour guides inside and the... Uh, so does this look, uh, do you guys understand these? Now let's look at in terms of those four dimensions. Which of these do you think has a very high centralization? Now obviously if you look at this is the red, this is small red, very short, so they have small, not very centralized. Uh, Walmart they have more uh, centralization. If you think about Al Huda, probably the big boss, they have control over all of the things that happen inside the company. Now, if you think about the museum, do you think it is centralized? It is very centralized. Every single activity that happens inside the museum, the manager has to be aware of, right? You can't take a piece from uh, this section to the other section without the manager approval, right? Because there are guards who make sure that everything doesn't move. And there are also experts who have the, you know, who are going to tell you, the, you know, this part is part of this history, it needs to be in this room. So you can't move it. If you want to move it, it has to go through paperwork, right? So do you see the centralization inside the museum will be very high. Inside the supermarket, it will be maybe a little less, but still, you know, you can't have a new section or add a new item to your supermarket without the manager approval. But if you think about the CMN soft, software company, do you think it should be centralized or it should be decentralized? Maybe it should be more space, more employment creativity uh, you know if you work in a, a software company you need to be able not every decision you need to go back to the big boss do you see let's say uh, what, what do Yemen soft do software let's say they are making a software uh, that is going to help the banks okay so they will make a mobile application uh, for banks to uh, allow their customers to make payments through their mobile phones okay now, let's say they are doing testing on mobile apps for, uh, let's say, the Apple device. Tomorrow, they want to do it on the Samsung tablet. Tomorrow, they want to do it on uh, this new Windows 10 environment. Every day, they want to go and check with the manager to approve this. Difficult, right? Uh, they need to be able to have a lot of decentralization. So if I'm responsible for this project, I make the decision. If you are responsible for some other projects, you make your own decisions. So they need to have decentralization. Are you guys okay with this? Now, if we look, look into this uh, formalization, which one has a lot of rules? And if you look at their wall, they have a lot of sticky notes on the walls that says rule number one, rule number two. Which one do you think will have a highest? Yeah, if you look at this, this color here, which is like bluish, uh, the highest here is in the museum. Okay, in the museum, there's a lot of rules. Almost every piece inside the museum has a piece of paper next to it that says, you know, this piece was made, this was placed, its date, its age. Do you see? Even? What do you mean? Ah, don't touch even. You know, they write, don't touch this one. Okay, don't take pictures. Okay, don't talk loudly. 
There is a camera everywhere that makes sure that people are following those rules. Even laser sensors. You know, as soon as you try to touch it, they will immediately catch you. So that's the uh, museum. But inside the Huda, do they need in the supermarket to have a lot of rules? Well, if you go to Al Huda, you see there, you know, Kilo Burtukal 520. Do you see? Yeah, that's part of the formalization. They also, you can see there, they have, you know, they have also rules, this section, you know, don't touch, uh, don't use, uh, this uh, cannot be returned. If you want to return, you have to have your own original receipts. You see, they have a lot, you know, for inside the employees, you know, you see, you know, Tamim Idari Rakam Wahid. You know, this section you cannot move in uh, cashiers. If you want to take money, you have to take money, which is, you know, do not accept dollars. You have to accept this type of currencies. Uh, we don't exchange. If you, do you see, there's a lot of rules. Now, if you go to uh, Yemen software, software company, can they put rules for their software engineers? They will never uh, have time to work. How many rules and how many no rules? So we have a very low uh, formal, uh, formalization. Now let's look at the green. <coughs> What's the green? The specialization. specialization. Now inside the museum, are they specialized? No. Very highly specialized. The person in charge of history for age number one, if you look at the specialization inside the, uh, inside the uh, museum, Probably the, the people there who work in the history of this particular age, they're very specialized. There may be historians who work inside the museum, right? Not anyone will work inside the museum. You need to be very specialized in order to be able to provide guidance, to maybe answer questions. Maybe you need some archaeologists who are familiar with how to maintain these parts or uh, how to, uh, you know, uh, write the history of these parts or on the other hand, inside the supermarket, do you need to have specialization or anyone can do anything? Well, according to this, it is a little bit high in specialization. So probably inside this Walmart, uh, or maybe Al Huda, the cashiers, they're specialized in cashiers. They count money fast, do you see? If you go inside the fruit section, all the people there, they know how to maintain apples and how to maintain uh, bananas and how to keep them away from the bugs and the fungus and the bacteria and do you see people who work inside the meat section they know how to deal with the big meat and how to cut it and how to make it grounded and how to make it small pieces big pieces and do you see and they know the different types of cutting those you know different types of meats so uh, on, on the other hand, if you go inside this uh, software company, it is also a little bit high specialization. You know, people who do networking, they do networking. But are they very specialized? They say not very specialized. Because you may find someone who's a programmer, let's say, in C++, but they can also program in Java, and they also know a little bit about networking. So, so they have a lot of knowledge in IT. It's a software company. But at the same time, are they 100% very specialized? Maybe not. There's more space for, you know, not specialization. And then the fourth, last one, the configuration. Uh, the percentage of the people who are non-workflow personnel. The people who are more support. You can see the people who are not support. You know, if you look at this purple color, uh, we've got, this is maybe the highest. Inside the software company, you have a lot of people, they are not in the workflow. You have a lot, maybe secretaries, maybe assistants. You have maybe people who uh, do testing. Let's say if you are a software company and you make this software. Maybe you need 10 or 5 people. Their job is just to test. Make sure it works. Find any bugs. Do you see? So maybe they're not in the direct workflow. Rather, they're in the support services. Uh, you can also see support services inside the museum. You know, you will have some people. They're support. Uh, they're not into the direct work. So, uh, you know, maybe people who do control or maybe who, uh, you know, maybe people who assist security to make sure it's effective and efficient. And then here the list is inside the supermarket. In the supermarket, everyone do their job and their job is very important. You know, you cut the meat so you can sell to the customer. If you don't cut the meat, the customer will need someone to cut the meat. You see, you don't have, we don't have a lot of secretaries or people who provide assistance, do you see, who just wander around, maybe very few supervisors even.
you see so uh, in comparison maybe we have less people here in configuration any questions on this slide